This is Mongolian Mindset, and today we're going to be doing a special thing for you guys. We're going to be releasing Anakin Skywalker's MBTI um, and Christian Hate Christensen um, Hayden, um, the actor for him as well. We'll be using Linda Barron's interaction styles combined with cognitive functions, temperament, interaction styles combined with cognitive functions. Holly, recommend you pick these books up. Uh, so Anakin, I have Anakin as an ENTP. Uh, he is a four wing three. Uh, you see him go from a SP where he's channeling his suffering for strength to full on sexual four in episode three. And therefore, they're on. You know, he doesn't make the way back to SP uh, four until Luke and him fight and he throws Palpatine off the damn wall. Palpatine's an INTJ, obviously. Um,. The thing that people miss with Anakin, you'll see him in the movie. He'd be talking about, I'm more special than you. Um, that's that's more of a four-wing thing. The envy he had for Obi-Wan. You're sleeping with Obi-Wan. I know it. You know, all that theatrics. That's some four shit there. Okay. Um, I want to say he did an actual great job on this, but let's get into Hayden Christensen. Okay, they have him as an ISFP. Okay, we're going to use our metrics here with our typing chart. Uh, ISFPs are responding, they're outcome, they're informative, they're T -I -T -E -F -I. Uh, concrete, they're interest based, um, S E N I. Okay, if he meets those metrics, we'll call him an ISFP. Generally speaking, a lot of the actors play their roles. A lot of times, so we're gonna be looking forward to him possibly being an ENTP like Anakin Skywalker. But let's get into this and comment below what you think his type is. Me and Victor was, Victor was recommending him in the Discord, and I was like, you know what? We'll go ahead and get him on the channel. Um, so, so we're gonna do, and we are still doing the free typing sessions by us at this point. We do think we are um, the best on, and we're actually doing this for absolutely free. People are charging hundreds, two hundred, three hundred bucks, five hundred. Some people charge a thousand. We're doing this shit absolutely free. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, uh, join our Discord or our Facebook group, and message our moderator Cody, and he will get back to you with his with our availability on that. Um, they, they, you can't miss this out. And uh, I'm gonna try to get out another video this week on five things you can do, or we might switch that up. Uh, I got Christian. Christian's gonna be joining me again on that, so that should be fun. Highly recommend if you didn't see the last video on that. Those things like the power the rule of one more i would highly recommend you look into that because that has changed my life a lot sometimes i'm tired don't want to go to the gym sometimes i'm tired don't want to do this but i can always do one more that's the power of that or having a clear clear vision of where you want to go um and stop blaming other people but it's a video it's a video i'll leave it in the comments you guys can check that out but let's get into this these are our metrics here we'll go over them as we get them um yeah do this. Comment below what you think his type is. I know we already said Anakin is ENTP, but he might not be ENTP. Who, who knows? I'm Rob Lapuria, senior editor at God Derby, here with Hayden Christensen, who stars in the limited series Obi Wan Kenobi. Hayden, how do you wrap your head around how significant a pop culture icon Darth Vader is? And consequently, how significant a moment it is for you to reprise your role as the Dark Lord. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I don't know that you fully do. Um, you know, it, it, it was it was such a an iconic character ever since I was a little kid, and um, and getting to to go into his past yes, to I. play this role was was really just the opportunity of a lifetime. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I don't know that I, I could ever fully sort of get my head around. Coming off informative. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He is passive. I don't even know what the fuck he just said. I really don't. And I, I just cut him on. I don't even know what the fuck he said. Tell me below. An iconic character ever since I was a little kid. And um, and getting to, to play this role was, was really just the opportunity of a lifetime. Um, but yeah, I don't know that I, I could ever fully sort of get my head around how sort of big it was just because uh, it didn't really sort of serve my purposes as, as an actor and trying to, to just figure out how to play this character. Um, 
but but it's definitely a, a a great character to get to play and, and getting to come back all these years later and, and do some more with him has just been uh you, you know a phenomenal experience yeah um directly um i don't know what the fuck he just said there but he went off on tangents and then came back and that looked like some progression there because i mean jesus initiating progression huh i mean informative progression Deborah Chow uh, explained the genesis of bringing him back and saying that the decision wasn't really made lightly. Um, so after the creative team approached you to bring him <coughs> back, um, what was your immediate reaction and was there any hesitation at all? No, I was, I was immediately so excited to get to come back. Um, zero hesitation. I, uh, you know, I, 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 had... I, 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 come on, he's S-I-N-E. Stop playing with me heard about this Obi-Wan Kenobi project and that and that Ewan was getting to go back and, and I was thrilled for him and 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 excited to, to, to get to see him play this character again um, and then when I got the phone call uh, saying that, that they you know going through a progression here for the whole damn journey of how he got back to playing Darth Vader in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series wanted to have me back too um, I was I was over the moon um, and and when I when I met with Deborah for the first time, and she kind of told me a little bit about what she wanted to do and, and how she wanted to handle the character. What she wanted to do and how she wanted to handle the character. That TNE, what she wanted. I thought it just it sounded really spot on, and and she is someone that that um, has a lot of reverence for this character and, and really kind of. Uh, you know, wanted to do him justice and, and, and also really understand about what she wanted that's in E some more it's this character um, uh, so I thought I was in, in good hands with her yeah, I, I I and so many of the fans really felt the same way that it was just um, the people behind this, these series particularly like Obi-Wan really love the franchise and love the universe and I'm so grateful for that I'm so grateful for you as well um, for being able to to come back so um so like enthusiastically so then i'm wondering when you're preparing to get back into this character it's been a while since you played him were you surprised at all at yourself or did the process pretty much match what you were expecting when you went through that journey so to speak as far as like bringing him back into your just, just getting back into the character yeah. again yeah i mean um you know, I, I think there was kind of like there was two really significant um, scenes for me. There was the, the, the flashback scene um, and that was that was really a function of just trying to to recapture the, the essence of the character at that time in his life. And um, and that came surprisingly easy, uh, uh, just putting the costume back on again. And, you know, I'd spent so much time with Anakin. I, you know, I, I, I know him very well. Oh, and then getting I, on set I, with I, you and I'm going to go ahead and hit him. I'm hitting for S I N E. Okay, he's an S I N E user. He's informative. He's taking a passive role in the conversation. He's not directing anything. He's not specific, concise, and to the point. Um, I'm like when I listen to this guy, I feel like I'm walking away with nothing. When he, after he talks. Like when I talk, you see you walk away with something. When he gets to talking, it's like what, the, like what the fuck did I hear? Like, so we're gonna get him for in form of S I N E. But that being said, that eliminates a lot of types. We're down to the S F J and the N T P S. Okay, N T P S, S F Js and the N T P S. That means E S F J, I S F J, E N T P and I N T P. Um, based off just S I N E and informative. Okay, we get pragmatic. We already got a little progression there. So it's looking like this guy's a starter type. Um, just more chill version. Oh, let's keep going. Um, it just all kind of just fell into place. and, and, and All was, just fell into place, progression. You know, like like no, no time had passed. No outcome. Um, and then, you know, and then, the, the, the other sort of significant scene for me was the one at the end, you know, the confrontation between Obi-Wan and Vader when he cracks the helmet. 
and that was um, that was really exciting for me because it was really exploring new ground. Um, yeah. And, um, and exploring new ground, any possibilities? Exploring more possibilities there. Taking this character to a place that we haven't seen before, um, and so I was I was you know so so excited by that challenge. And of course you was. Yeah. You, any hero got to do what it wanted to do, huh? Um, Something new. And just getting to to sort of understand Darth Vader at, at that point in his life and, and talking about understanding Darth Vader, that's T I the function for understanding is T I understanding. And you know instill a little bit of Anakin into him and uh, and you know, the way that scene was written was was so perfect. Uh so I was I was I felt really honored you know to get to do that scene and and i was so happy with how it came out yeah i want to talk a bit more about it because that was the emotional highlight of the whole series for me and so many others in episode six i thought it was like just a 10 out of 10 in every way that it was put together oh. especially oh. like a teary-eyed obi-wan apologizing to anakin for everything oh, shit. and yeah, anakin yeah, responding with half that mask cracked off you know, we also do still have NFPs in there. They're also S I N E and informative, so we do have the NFP still on the board. ENFP and INFP are still on the board. Let's... You, I, I really can't put it into words. I'm just curious. You're both lit with those lightsabers as well. Um, what did you think about all those creative choices um, that were made to bring that scene to life? Because it's there's nothing else like it. It's really good. Yeah, thank you. I, I um, you know, it, it, it's credit to a lot of people that contributed to 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 that scene. From, um, you know, the the design of the mask and how how it was cracked and how much of the face we were going to get to see, and uh, and Doug Chang and his whole team and, and the work that they did, and, um, and and you know, the cinematography, the lighting, um, and and. You know, Deborah is, is obviously the person that brings it all together, and and it's it's really you know hats off to her um, because she I think had the vision for it and 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 really gently guided you and, and I sort of through that scene, um, like somebody else's and I to guide you through. But it was a big one, and we all knew it was a big one uh, going into it. You know just when I got on to set, it felt different on set. And yeah, yeah, I was on set, um, I got there. What the fuck is he talking about? Yeah, yeah, I'm on set. Uh, going into it, you know, just when I got on to set, it felt different on set. And yeah, yeah, I was on set, um, I got there and Ewan was there sort of on his own, um, just getting ready, waiting waiting for, for myself and, um, and so I got there and we just started, started talking about the scene a little bit. And, um, and before we knew it, I, I turned around and, and, and the entire crew had gathered and, and lots of people from the you know, production offices had, had come down and, and we had an audience. Um, and, and so we, you know, then we got into it and, and the very first take it. Progression. I mean, look at that. And before we knew it, I, I turned around and on set. And yeah, yeah, I was on set. Um, I got there and Ewan was there sort of on his own, um, just getting ready, waiting waiting for, for myself. And um, and so I got there and we just started, started talking about the scene a little bit. And um, and before we knew it, I, I turned around and, and, and the entire crew had gathered and, and lots of people from the you know production offices had, had come down and, and we had an audience, um, and and so we, you know, then we got into it, and, and the very first take, it just kind of worked, um, and and we knew we were sort of in a good place, and so we started to kind of play with it a little bit and try some different things, um, but trial and error there, regression. What what Maybe really surprised me was what Ewan brought to it. I think it's his performance that that really makes that scene so heartbreaking is because you, you feel it in his performance 
Um, and I was I was kind of caught off guard by that as well, you know. Talking about what you feel, F.E., and he's giving him some, blowing his ego up with some F.E. there. Uh, it was it was it was a very powerful experience and and yes, I... um, and a, you know a professional highlight for me getting getting to do that scene with you. I, I yeah I. I can only getting to do that scene with you more F.E. Imagine because I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall. I'm not surprised that everyone wanted to watch it. I mean, this is the rematch of the century, you know. As a kid, I um, and I was telling this to Deborah. I've seen the scene where Vader vanquishes Obi Wan on the Death Star probably a hundred times, and it means a lot to me. And just to see to contextualize that scene in this, it just shows you, doesn't it, Hayden? How art film and cinema and TV can have such an impact on our lives. What do you feel about that, given that you are now part of that? It, it, it's incredible, the, 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 the power of the medium of film. Um, and, and Star Wars is so successful at that, you know. Um, but, but, you know, that, that, that scene was, um, I, I think, critical to, to, to just furthering our, our understanding of, of that relation. Given a lot of extra information, he's passive, not choosing his role in the conversation. This man's informative as fuck. Ship and just makes it all that much more tragic. Um, um, but yeah, you know, the, the, the power of Star Wars is, is incredible. And, um, you know, every day that's, that's, uh, it's not lost on me. Um, I, I feel very fortunate to, to get to be a part of something that, that has this kind of impact. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so I, you know, I loved the flashbacks that you mentioned earlier uh, with you as Anakin before he becomes Vader on Mustafa. Um, so there's some great swashbuckling in episode five, uh, for instance, notwithstanding all the training and rehearsal, which I am assuming would have been arduous and, and challenging, but when it comes time to actually film those scenes and, and really go for it, what's going through your mind? Do you recall back in the day when you were on set that day? Yeah, it was really just a lot of fun. I, hey. uh, I gotta say, you know, getting to swing a lightsaber is, is, is just good fun. Um, you know, you do a lot of work in the preparation um, and, and learning the fight. Um, is also so enjoyable um but it's it's you know months of 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 getting the choreography right and, and um being able to execute you know the way that you hope your character would so by the time you get on the set uh all that work is done and and you know you and i also have sort of a, a natural kind of rapport and and timing um with each other uh from our prequel days and and so it really was just like old hat, you know, swinging a lightsaber with you and again, and wow. uh, and we were having a blast. Wow, um, you uh, obviously worked together on Attack of the Clones first. That's where you met uh, in mid two thousand, I think, in Sydney. And I read that it had been a long time since you'd seen each other. What was the first day on set where you reunited, and what was that like? Um, <clears throat> it was a special day. I. I uh... You know, you and I had had gotten together before filming had started, just to sort of catch up a little bit, because we hadn't seen each other in a while. Um, but that first day back on set, when we were both in costume again, um, and I saw him as as Obi Wan, and, and he got to see me as Anakin, um, it, it was the the scene where uh, Obi Wan sees this sort of the. Uh, like apparition, not apparition, but like a, he's, he's sort of hallucinating a little bit. He thinks he sees Anakin in the desert, yeah. um, and so I was I was there in my Jedi robes, and um, yeah, it was it was a very special moment, um, and uh, gave him a big hug and and um, and gave him a big hug, Effie. <sighs> So we are now down to SFJs, okay? We are down. We are down to SFJ and e, uh, NTPs. We're gonna hit them for progression very soon. Um, and we'll be down to ESFJ or ENTP.
you know, uh, it's something that I'll remember for, for a long, long time. What, what do you most value about Ewan creatively as a scene partner? He's just so good at what he does. Um, he, he understands the craft of acting, um, really well you know he's 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 a you know a, a classically trained actor and um and he, he's just a natural at it uh when we were doing the prequels you know i, I was i was so excited that i was gonna get you hear that his eyes come up before the we's and the you's and all that it's always the eyes first that's first person si get to work with ewan mcgregor i was a huge fan of his and Every day on set, um, it was a, a, a learning experience. Just watching him, you know. Learning experience. Yeah. All right, we're down to S SFJ and no ESFJ and ENTP. So we're in here with progression there. That knocks us down to ESFJ. Your ENTP. Uh, go about his performance, um, uh, and and you can't get a better scene partner. You know he's so committed, and and he you know genuinely really cares about the work and and the outcome, um, and he he gives it everything he's got. Yeah, um, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, fan reaction because. All of my friends, family, uh, people in the industry that I know, um, whenever we, we talk about Star Wars generally, there's such a, like, there's a renaissance, I suppose, of appreciation, admiration. He's one of these annoying ass ENTPs that's like fucking, like Leonardo DiCaprio, man. You can just tell he's not effy hero. You can just tell he's not effy hero. In respect for what you were able to bring to this character, uh, that perhaps maybe wasn't there, you know, t uh, 25 years ago or whenever it was when, when you first played him as a much younger man. And I just love that people are finally coming around uh, to that. When I saw you at Star Wars Celebration in London, I, I couldn't believe how, like, how taken aback you were with the enthusiastic and love and admiration that you were getting from the fans. Um, do you recall um, what that was like and what that experience meant to you? At, at the celebration in London? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I was definitely caught off guard um, by by the reception I got from, from the fans. Um, you know, uh, it's been it's been a journey with this character and, and with this franchise. And, He's talking about the journey, progression. Um, and it's, you know, life is funny. Uh, sort of, you know, the... the the affection that people have for for those films now, and um, and so yeah, when I when I when I was walking on stage and um, and I just sort of saw all these you hear the eye comes for any fucking thing else first person faces uh, of, of of all these people showing their support. Um, it was very touching, and and I was I was uh, emotionally moved by it, and. Um, uh, yeah, it was it was a special moment. Um, I want to ask you just one random question um, before we wrap up, I suppose, um, and that is, back in two thousand and one, um, you know, you were kind of riding high on you know this huge uh, sequel trilogy, a prequel trilogy, sorry, uh, and uh, you're a big name, and then you got nominated for a Screen Actors Guild Award for Life as a House. Um, and I was so excited about that because obviously as a fan of Star Wars and a fan of your work, and I loved it how your fellow actors um, re were really enthusiastic about recognizing your performance. Do you re remember what that was like? And I can't remember if you were there or not. I think you were, uh, but what was that like being a nominee? Um, for, for the Life is a House film? Yeah. Yeah, that was an exciting time. Um, um... That was a, a film I was very proud of, and 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 um, and it was you know a nice thing that that my performance got some some recognition. Um, the SAG Awards, I, I you know um, I forget it was the SAG Awards, and and I, and I got nominated for a Golden Globe. Yes. Um, 
but yeah, the whole thing was, 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 was really nice. And I got to take my mom to one of the events and I think my grandma, uh, accompanied me to the other and, um, and yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice thing when, 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 when you get that sort of recognition, I guess. Yeah. I, I think it's, you know, it's a nice little pat on the back. It's better than a kick in the face. It's better um, than a kick. Absolutely. <laughs> If you were able to come back as Vader again in future in other series, would you do it, or would you just think maybe you've 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 done enough, and it's time to move on? No, hundred percent. I'm I'm there. I I, <laughs> I I love this character, and and if the opportunity presents itself, um, uh, I'm there with bells on. I'm there with bells on. What the fuck is that? I'm there with bells on. Well, that's I, I could say that's some type of abstraction there, but let's see, what can we grab now? Mm-hmm. Grab in the middle somewhere. I remember waiting two, three, and the voice, and I remember like scaring my little sister just trying to imitate <laughs> the Darth Vader voice, and it worked. You know, there's something about the construct of that character that just um is is very effective and because I, th- I think it's more it's more than just the look and the the the, the presence and it's the story behind the idea and you of know, course the, the, he's one of these annoying ass entps where you have to do a fucking lot of work or yeah action the, the same because they can come off affiliative or whatnot but you can just tell this man's not effy hero i mean you can tell this man's not effy hero the city of of that yeah no for sure and you know i think kind of subverted all of our sort of expectations and understanding of this character when he went back to episode one and introduced him as this very sweet young kid who just had a lot of promise and a lot of potential and he really mapped out a very compelling uh, character arc um, that was hopefully somewhat sympathetic. We understood what Anakin was going through and maybe why he was making some choices that, that, that perhaps weren't the best decisions and the circumstances sort of surrounding his life. And it was a very uh, understandable sort of fall to the dark side. Yeah. But it humanized him and made him a real person and, and almost somewhat of a, of a pathetic person in, in a lot of ways, you know. And, and you feel for Darth Vader now in a different way too. Definitely. It's, it's this man trapped and you feel he's getting abstract here. In, in this life that perhaps he didn't really want. I like that, that you're saying because it's the suddenly I, I connected with with what Tony Gilroy did with Andor, you know, and this this idea of having to tell a story backwards, you know, to go to a prequel, mm. and then to go like, well, okay, we have we have an opportunity, uh, you know, to make sure that this character you think you know today comes from from something you would never imagine, you know, a past that you would never imagine for a character like this. And that's an interesting thing that happens with the universe of Star Wars that, you know, it's it's, some, it's so hectic and difficult to understand that like, okay, it started in episode four, then there was one, but then there's these things that are, are star- You can tell this motherfucker a uh, starter too. And the loans, but yeah. are part of it. Yeah. And it yeah. brings creativity at its best, you know, in a way when you have to, yeah, not imagining something from beginning to end as simple as that, you know. On Andor, you're a producer as well. And so what's that like? I mean, how, <laughs> how involved are you as a, as a producer? What does your day look like on set? I, I would say a good 15, 20 years ago, I started to be very much aware of what was happening before and after and very interested in, in getting involved and being part of that. Sometimes acting started to feel in a way it alienated you from the actual process of making film, mm. you know? And theater is the opposite. That's mm. why I always think of theater as my reference, you know? In theater, you were there from the first read till the last night, you know? And you do it many times yourself, well, yeah. you know? But as an actor, you can kind of get insulated Progression in, in, in your character in a lot of ways. In film, yeah. And, and then you arrive when most choices have, uh, uh, have been made, you know? You arrive when there's a set, when there's like an idea, when there's like designs, when there's a cast and a location. And it's nice to get involved from the beginning, from the moment where uh, designs are just 
sketches and, and your questions and your comments can have an input actually. And I would assume you're, you're that much more invested in the work you're doing as an actor too, because you've, you've been a part of all of those decisions along the way. And you, you arrive to a place and you know why you were there. You know why it's here right. and not there. Right, you know? you're more informed. And then you, you in a way help everyone else because we have hundreds of speaking parts, you know, so many actors come in and out of our show. <laughs> and oh, it's God good damn. that you can be there and, and, and make them feel safe, you know, and, and give them the information they need. It's a great feeling to know what you're part of. And in cinema, many times it can be the other way around, you know. You can arrive to the premiere and realize you were part of a film you didn't know you were doing. <laughs> but I also think that this long format for us is 24 <laughs> episodes. And it's going to be four years and a half of our lives, you know. Uh, he boxing him in the corner with his fucking mouth. So <laughs> it's the only way also, because you have to own it. You have to, uh, I mean, I, I took a flight last night to be here to talk to you, and I'll take a flight right now to go back to work. Progression, yeah, Because I care about this show and because it feels mine, and I am part of this family, and I want to defend what we do and, and, and uh, fight to make it better, you know? In, in this long format also, you do need different people to be part of the production. Like here, uh, the production designer is also an executive producer. Then there is three more producers, you know? So while Tony Gilroy is writing and looking at dailies, there's people on set shooting. Christian is like, get me the fuck out of here. The thing, there's people planning the next thing. And uh, it's important that, that it feels like a, a a machine that moves together, you know? Abstract it's impossible to do this long format in the way we learned cinema was made, you know, where there's just like a director that goes through every process. Here, you're promoting while it's out, while you're shooting, while you're preparing what's to come, all at the same time. Look, you got the money, I got the box. What else is there to talk about? Navigating a career as much as I was just trying to do work that appealed to me mm. and play characters that, that I thought would challenge me and, and help me grow as an actor. And, and that was a great freedom. What Star Wars is- Yeah, we finally got great freedom. Oh, pragmatic, finally. Finally, boy. Boy, you, you annoying ass fucking, what was his fucking name? Leonardo DiCaprio annoying ass. Think about navigating a career as much as I was just trying to do work that appealed to me mm. and play characters that, that I thought would challenge me and, and help me grow as an actor. And, and that was a great freedom. What Star Wars has, has really given me is, is a connection to Effie. all the people that love these stories. It's such a special thing. Connection to the people, Effie. That you can't fully appreciate unless you're sort of a part of something like that. But to have that sort of impact on an audience yeah. and have that sort of carry with them and stay with them. I mean, I, I meet people now and and it makes me feel a little bit old, but they'll, they'll say to me, you know, like, <laughs> Anakin was my hero when I was a kid and now like my kid loves Anakin and it's like this generational thing that, that kind of gets passed down and that's, you know, really special. But how about you? How has Star Wars changed your life? I would say that yeah, I'm done here, man. I'm going ENTP. I'm not. I'm gonna go ENTP on Christensen Hayden, Hayden Christensen, ENTP. Ah, damn, dude. He's one of the annoying ones. But the ENTPs are initiating abstract, systematic, informative, pragmatic. Progression, S-I-N-E and T-I-F-E. I don't even think I can get an Instagram on this guy, man. I didn't get much from him, really. Um, if I had to guess, he's not a one, he's not a nine, he's not an eight. Doesn't seem like a seven. Doesn't seem like a five. He's a hard one. I'm not even gonna give him an Instagram. I, I I really don't know what this guy. I have to watch a lot more on that for him. Um, but he's an ENTP. Um, this is annoying one, but I'm out.